Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. We're going to continue on with our one page scrolling website build. We've done the hero section, the about us section, services section, team section, a little animated project section, testimonial section, and we're going to go on to do a portfolio section. Down below that we've got a contact us section and a live Google map. Today we're going to be working on the testimonial section with a little slider there. Really easy to do, we're just using the Divi theme, no extra plugins for this. So let's go to our page we were building and enable the Visual Builder. Okay, once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. We left off last time with the little project section there. I'm going to click on the bottom of this section. I'm going to hit the little blue button to add a new section. I'm going to use a regular section. As in most of our sections here, I just want to add a title to the top. And in the second video we built, we saved one to our library. So I'm going to add a single column. I'm going to go to my library. And there's a one page title. I'm just going to pop that in there. For anybody that doesn't know how to load and save from library, have a look at that second video in the series. Or if you just want to build it, we're using the default font here, uppercase. We're using 50 pixels in size with the default blue and a little bit of text shadow there. Great, well we've got our title. Of course I want to change this to testimonials. So you can click on it. You can either actually just type it in by selecting it or you can go into the module. So, that's going to work for me. Great. Well, underneath that, we want an actual revolving testimonial slider with some testimonials for our customers. So I'm going to click on the row, the green little square there. I'm going to add a new row. And inside, again, I'm just going to put a single column because that's where I want my slider to reside. Divi comes as standard with all these light gray modules here. Today, I'm going to use the slider module. There it is right there. Anybody that's wondering about the dark blue ones there, they're from a free plugin called Divi Supreme Light, but we're not using that in this build today. So I'm going to pop in a slider. Let's roll down a bit. And there it is. There's our first slide right there. I'm going to get rid of the second one. It gives you two by default. And with most of these, you probably notice the pattern that I have when I'm building. I'll get the first one right, then I'll just clone it for the rest of them. Unless, of course, you want to do individual styling on each of them. Okay, so let's go into our first one here. I'm going to hit the little cog. For the title, I'm going to put the name of the person. As you can see, it's up there, and we can style that any way we want in a minute. I'm not going to have a call to action button on mine. Basically, all I want is a, a name, some information, the testimonial, if you like, and their position or company underneath. So I don't want a button. I'm simply going to select the click here and delete it. And as you can see, or as you can't see, the button's disappeared. Now where the content is, this is where I want to actually make the testimonial. So I'm going to grab that text there. I'm going to delete it. I've got a bit of dummy Lorem Ipsum text here. I'm going to copy that. Inside, I'm going to put it in some inverted commas. So I'm going to put some inverted commas in there, two pairs. An opening and a closing, if you like. And I'm going to paste my dummy text in the middle. There it is right there with the inverted commas either end. Now a lot of testimonials used to be the style with old style web building would always be in Georgia italic. So if you want to you can select it and just hit the italic button right there to keep in line but the styling is entirely up to you obviously. Now down below I want their position and their company perhaps. Let's say CEO Biz Inc. Now to make that stand out a bit more, I'm going to make it into a heading three. And again, I'm just going to select it. Go up here. I'm going to click on the little paragraph chevron there and make it a heading three. If we look down there, that's now heading three. And I think I'll bold it and italicize it. That's fine. Now if you want it a little further down, you can add another space in there. Great. Well, moving on down, 
You can add images or videos to it. There's no point for a testimonial slider, so I'm going to skip over that. But if anybody wants to, you can add an image or a video in there. It'll appear on the left-hand side. So let's close that up, and we'll go down to Link. Now, if you choose to have a button in there and you want to link it somewhere, that's where you'd put the link. Or if you want the whole module to link somewhere, you can also put a link right there. Always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off-site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Now I'm gonna keep this fairly simple today with the background. I've been using sort of blues and purples here, but you can really go to town if you want to. For instance, I'll throw a blue in there. If you wanted to, you can combine that with images or gradients and background patterns. I'll just demonstrate a couple for you if you wanted to chuck an image in there. Simply go over to image, because we've got background color, gradient, image, video, background pattern, or background mask. So I'm gonna chuck an image in, and I'll take any one just for reference, because I'm gonna take it away in the end there. As you can see, you've got an image background there. If you want to actually blend it with the color that we had there, you can do that just down the bottom, background image blend. You can get some wonderful effects by doing that and make your text pop out really nicely. And like I say, they've got some very interesting ones here. If you play around, you can get some amazing effects. Then once you've done that, if you want to, you can add a background pattern. Just click on the button there. Choose polka dots, lines. It's got all kinds of different things going on there. And you can color it. Take the opacity up and down so it's sort of slightly in there. And you can make it a custom size if you want to with the actual size right here. Slide it up and down. Now I'm just demonstrating this for you. I'm really not going to do that with mine. I want to keep them quite simple. But there's all kind of options. And of course the last one up there is the background mask. And you can add mask patterns if you want to. And there's quite a few to choose from here as well. But like I say, I'm just gonna use a simple blue color on mine, so I'll take everything else away. There we go, great. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking, but it's way too deep for me. I don't want it to be as deep as that. And I perhaps want some rounded corners and a little bit of box shadow to lift it off the page. So let's move over to the design tab over here. Don't want an overlay. It's perfectly readable as it is. Navigation, well, when I add more, we'll have some little navigation buttons on the bottom there, or pagination buttons. And you can also have arrows left and right. Got no image. We've got the text down below there, but what I wanna do is just make it a bit skinnier. I'm fairly happy with the way things are there. Might take that title, that his name down a little bit. So I'll go to the title text there, and let's perhaps make that uppercase make it a bit stronger, maybe semi-bold. I'm gonna take it down a bit in size. I think that's plenty big enough. Obviously you style it however you wish. But I wanna take some of this space away, top and bottom. I'm also gonna give it a fixed height so that if we have different amounts of text in there, it's gonna remain the same height. So let's roll on down to spacing. And of course you've got body text if you wanna style that text with a different font. You've got hundreds to choose from with the Divi. And to audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example. I'm gonna leave mine on the default there. So I'm gonna go down to spacing. And let's put a zero top and bottom and see what we've got. I'm just gonna put a zero in the top there. Yeah, that's a little less than I want. So let's say 50. 50 picks, that's great. And I'll do similar on the bottom. It's not gonna to make too much difference on the bottom because I'm gonna give it a fixed height in a moment, but for the smaller ones it may. So I'm gonna hit the chain and it'll do the bottom automatically for us. Great, well that's kind of the size I want. Great, so we can close that up. I'm gonna save it and it'll take us back to our main slider settings here. So I'm gonna hit the little green button there. I wanna give it some rounded corners and also we'll give it that fixed height while we're in the main settings here. So let's go over to design, go to sizing, and we've got min minimum height there. So I'm gonna use minimum height, that way it can get bigger on mobile devices if it needs to, but it can't get any smaller. So I'm gonna say minimum height, and you can just drag it down to the size that you want. 
And like I say, this one's going to have the most text in it. So let's say 275. Let's round that down to 75. You can slide in, you can type a value in, and you can increment up and down with the little arrows there. Great. We can close up sizing now. And let's just give it some rounded corners. To do that, we can go down to border. And let's type in, say, 30. The higher the value, the more rounded the corners will be. And you may not see this on the back end here, but when we save and look at it on the front end, it will have those corners. And let's just add a bit of box shadow. Now we'll just lift it off the page a little bit. Great. So we've got our first slide. It's looking kind of how we want it to, or at least how I want it to. Let's go into our content now, where our first slide is, and we can simply duplicate it for the other ones. Go in there, obviously you're going to want to change the name. And they're not all going to have the same comments, so let's shave off a bit of this text perhaps. And you should notice that it stays the same height because we've given it a fixed height. And we'll put in the position, or whatever you want in there. Whatever you want to put there. And simply rinse and repeat one more time. And then I'll show you how to automate it. Let's put one more in. And again, we'll shave a bit of this off. Great. So we got three of those slides now. Well, I want mine to animate automatically, and obviously you can keep adding as many testimonials as you, as you have. So we'll save the slide settings here, and we'll go back into the main slider settings. We'll go down to design. Right at the bottom there, we've got animation. If you don't see it, chances are you're in one of your slides. So if we go to a content and into a slide, and you go over to design, nothing there. So if you don't see it, you're probably in one of your slides. Just hit the green check mark, get back to the main slider settings design down to the bottom and here's the animation I want mine to order automatically animate and that's saying roll around every seven seconds I might change mine to five seconds which would be 5,000 milliseconds and I don't want it to continue when they've got their mouse on it so I'll leave that to off that way when they put their mouse on it it'll stop revolving round if you turn that off, it'll keep revolving. I like to have it that way. That way they can put their mouse on it, give them a chance to read it before it slides to the next one, if they need to. Great. And as you can see, when I've got my mouse over there, we've got arrows here. We've got pagination dots on the bottom, which will stay there. If you want to design those, I'm happy to leave mine as they are. But if you do want to decide those, we've got navigation up here. And you can change your arrow color and dot color right there. So if we've done everything correctly, that should now work for us. And on the front end, we should also have rounded corners. So let's save this. We'll save the page changes, little purple button at the bottom. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And we'll roll on down to where we were working. And there's our little testimonial slider. It's sliding every five seconds. and changing it. As you can see, it's staying the same height. And it, it'll stop when we put our mouse on it. And you can navigate backwards or forwards at your own speed. And the pagination dots will do the same thing down the bottom there. So there you go, guys. There's how to add a little testimonial section to your one page scrolling slide with an automated slider. And we'll hook all these sections up with a menu and we'll put button links in when we've done all of our sections here. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. If you have any questions, please pop them down below the video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.